the situation of the evening. Well, I guess the newest news is Grant Taylor left. And right after his departure, I pretty much called it quits as well. There's no really replacing somebody like Grant Taylor. I mean, not to say that the team's still not not They still got Gil and Jake and Omar and Tyler. <coughs> but I don't know, just with everything, him leaving, Dylan Abe leaving, it just... I didn't really feel like the workshop I r rode for, so, you know, I talked to those dudes and said my farewells. Yeah, it was hard, you know. It, it's hard knowing that those dudes were already dealing with Dylan Abe leaving, starting their own company, and them taking that blow, and then Grant leaving, and I knew by me leaving that was kind of the bulldozer you know, effect. Like, Carter was like, you're not quitting, and I was like, I'm quitting, dude. And he's like, well, you know, think about it. Like, you know, everything's all good. Like, what do you want to do? Like, we'll make a change. And it's just like, yeah, it was fucking emotional. It's hard. Like, always quitting something like that. Like, you know, I've been on the workshop since I was 18. You know, that's like, whatever, eight, eight years or something, nine years. Yeah, it was hard to do, for sure. It's definitely a bit of a tearjerker, but, you know, I mean, it probably wasn't as hard as... Dylan and Abe leaving because they've been there forever and like Carter's like their dad pretty much but you know for me <clears throat> Dylan and Abe leaving like that's those are like my brothers and the reason why I was on the workshop in the first place. We'll be going over to the FA camp. Yeah. I like what those dudes do and they asked me to come over and ride for them and it just kind of seems like the right move. I love their whole take on like what they're doing you know it's a company now that <clears throat> I think skateboarding needs, they're fucking, they make what they want, they don't give a fuck what anybody thinks, and there's no censorship, you know, and I think skateboarding needs that now, and what they're doing is exactly like, I think what it used to be back in the day, you know, not giving a fuck about what fucking graphics you put out there, you know, piss people off, make people upset, people, like, make people talk, like, I think that whole kind of vibe of skateboarding needs to come back, and I think it is, you know. I think now is the time where skateboarding needs a transition. Like it's it's the the boiling points hit, man. Like I appreciate everything that you know Adidas and Nike and all these big companies do for skateboarding, and you know they pay some of these dudes like really fucking well money where they're gonna be fucking retiring off it. But like, how long is that gonna last? They're just gonna be in skateboarding until skateboarding is not cool anymore, and then then what is it, you know? I think now is the time to be supporting fucking skateboarding companies again, you know? Yeah. I also like, you know, coming from Gravis and building something from nothing, you know? We built that, like, it was, it was shit, you know? Gravis, nobody knew what fucking Gravis was, and being a part of that and, like, developing in, into, like, a pretty, like, respected skateboarding company, like, I enjoy being a part of the process. FA is the future. Nobody expects me to be in street leagues. Well, the thing about Deirdrick as well is like he knows like who he is now and what he represents. Like he'll be the first one to tell you like this. Like he knows like the key is not skateboarding anymore. You know, and it's cool that he like understands that. And I'm sure he's heard the fucking interviews that I've done with about street league and how much kind of not shit that I talk about it, but just like you know, it's. It's kind of a fucked way to represent skateboarding because it's not skateboarding as much as the street league would like it to be. He's all for, like, I think, seeing both sides of the story. I think he just doesn't want me flipping off the camera anymore because I think he got in trouble for it or something. I guess, like, ESPN or something where it's just like you need to tell your boy to, like, cool off. You can't be, like, flipping off the camera. Not that I did it to like flip off the cameraman or anything like that, but it's just like how can you not like want to make some obnoxious noise on a fucking Megatron where like the fucking dumb camera's pointed at you, you know what I mean? You know, if you've ever watched one of those things, it's, it's kind of the same outcome every time. And I feel like it's probably people like Austin and myself and like Davi and I mean, not to say that those dudes who do well like aren't like street skaters and sense because they've you know they've made their mark doing that but you know all those dudes fucking train for that shit they all take street league season 
off from real skating to like practice. So I guess like you know, seeing us in there, they you know, they want us to do good. If people do want us to do good, I don't know. I just kind of just skate, you know. I mean, because I know like I'm not gonna. I don't have the skill level of those dudes, you know, I don't have the consistency or whatever, so I, don't, I just kind of just skate. And I don't have that many tricks, so it's like, all right, I got these three options, and like, hopefully I landed like maybe like two out of three, you know, that's kind of my mentality about it, like, all right, cool, if I fucking land these, all right, if not, like, there's no fucking sweat off my back. Now, there's no like, there's no like shit talking really. There's none of that like fun stuff. I wish fucking these dudes would be more cruel about it. It'd be much more entertaining on the course if there was like, you know, shit talking in the water. I don't want to say like false camaraderie. But I feel like with those dudes, there's got to be like a underlying like, all right, I don't want you to land this because like I want to win. You know, there has, to, there has to be. There's so much money on the line for those dudes and it's in their fucking contracts, but. Like, honestly, this past year, like, I've just, I've just been real motivated to skate, and, you know, it just so happened that they started working on the Supreme thing, and I feel like this video is, is gonna be pretty, like, impactful, and, like, it's, I think it's gonna be a pretty important video for skateboarding now. I love Bill, like, I've known Bill forever, like, it's always fun being in New York, skating with him, and, being in LA skating with him. It's been one of the more mellow kind of filming projects because it's like, I don't know, he spent some time in LA and we were all here and it's just like, all right, let's all meet up in the schoolyard and skate in the schoolyards for a couple hours and like see what happens. And, you know, being back from here in New York and, you know, he's not a, f a film where like some you know somebody like Greg Hunt or like Jason Hernandez who's like all right like be in the van at like fucking 10 in the morning and like we're driving out to fucking Pasadena to do this like be there on fucking time you know and that that stuff's great and real motivating and I've definitely been on those projects but like with somebody like Bill it's like what up what are we doing today like all right we'll meet at Tompkins at like noon and see where it goes from there and you know, it's been fun doing that. It feels like I've been filming for like a friend's video, you know, type of thing. And, and he's such a good, he knows what he's doing. And I love his eye with everything, so. It's cool, I mean, it's gonna be a cool dynamic. I feel like most of it is either in the schoolyards of Los Angeles or the streets of New York. It's pretty much gonna be the video, which I think is gonna have a pretty, pretty cool element to it. I think it's gonna be a skateboarding video.